Mr yeah, Speaker. Yeah, yeah. Can I start by thanking sincerely my honourable friend, the member for Dorset West, and honourable members for Normanton, Grantham, Aberavon and other uh, constituencies cross party who have worked to make this afternoon possible. I believe, Mr Speaker, that they and all of us participating in this debate are doing democracy a favour, doing this House a favour, although they won't admit it, I think doing the government a favour and doing the British people who want us to find a sensible Brexit yeah, yeah. solution a favour. Mm. Let me be very clear, Mr Speaker, I was a Remain Minister in the last Government, but since the uh, referendum result, I have been very clear that we have to honour and respect that referendum result, yeah, yeah, yeah. both nationally in my duty as a member of this House and locally in my responsibility and duty to the people of Mid-Norfolk, who voted 62 per cent to leave, whereas the country voted 52 per cent. But I have also been consistently clear, Mr Speaker, that we also have to respect the concerns of the 48 per cent who did not want to leave, the legitimate interests of those citizens who could not vote in that election, particularly the young whose future we are shaping and who will have to live with the consequences of our actions, mm. and also the legitimate grievances of the 52 per cent who voted to leave. And one of the great disappointments of the last two and a half years is the almost shattering silence of those who brilliantly harnessed those grievances to, to deliver Brexit but haven't spoken about how we tackle those grievances, the feeling of blue-collar job insecurity, the lack of proper infrastructure locally, the house dumping, the sense that a big government, big debt is working against the localities of this country. And that agenda of renewal has to be right at the heart of delivering Brexit. Mr Speaker, we were told today that this uh, debate, this hunt for uh, indicative votes was a constitutional outrage, a Remainer conspiracy and tying the government's hands, all three completely false. Firstly, since when is it a constitutional outrage for this House to control its own business? It has always controlled its own business. And for those who say that the government of the day controls the business of the House, yes, it does so because its backbenchers normally automatically grant it the power so to do. But the sovereignty over our time has always been since the Civil War with this House. So to hear the Honourable Member for Somerset North East <laughs> pray in aid of medieval and Tudor laws against the sovereignty of this House, which I thought he was the greatest champion for, defending an executive that prefers not to listen, was one of the most extraordinary moments of today. Secondly, a Remainer conspiracy. Well, some conspiracy and some set of Remainers, because all of us working with the Honourable Member for Dorset West are supporting the Brexit withdrawal bill. Yeah, yeah, All of yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. We're not trying Absolutely. to defy Brexit. We're trying to find a way to get it yeah. through. And thirdly, tying the government's hands. What nonsense. It's an indicative vote to help the front bench to see where, if there is, God forbid, the need for a plan B or some further concession, where it might be to carry this bill through the House if, as I hope they don't, some of my hardline Brexit colleagues who would prefer a no deal to a deal continue to hold the government to ransom. Let us reach out across the House and find a Brexit that the whole country can support. Tonight, Mr Speaker, I will be voting for those uh, motions D and H for EFTA, and I will be voting against the second referendum. In due course, if this shambles goes on and on and on, ultimately the British people will decide, probably in a general election. This House has got to lift every stone, every rock to find a Brexit deal that can get through. The arguments for EFTA have been beautifully put by others this afternoon. I want to make simply two points. The vast majority of my Leave voters in Norfolk said, Mr Freeman, I voted to be in or I want to be in a common market, not a political union. They were stunned when they heard that the Brexit vote was somehow going to be an extraction from all of the single market, from all of the trade benefits of being in Europe. And that's why I think EFTA is such a powerful solution. Two points. Yes, it requires free movement, but it's free movement of workers, not citizens. And I would argue that it goes with two key reforms. Welfare reform, to make clear that people who come here to work shouldn't automatically receive the universal benefits that Clement Attlee put in place for those who'd fallen on the beaches and paid into our country. They can earn that right. And secondly, a massive programme of blue-collar skills investment to support those fearing economic insecurity. But mostly, Mr Speaker, I think EFTA has something that no other solution has. It's a settlement of this question. We'd be joining a bloc in Europe which, as we join, we would change the dynamics of Europe, a bloc that's been going for 40 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. It's tried, tested, proven. Business can rely on it. And I commend it as plan B, should the government's deal not go through. Yeah, yeah, yeah.